Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. This is Cassie Stumo. I'm the Marketing Specialist here at EAC. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar. We will start off today with an introduction of EAC and then our Technical Account Manager, Todd Liebenau, will present to us on Creo Simulation Live. Uh, Brittany Woods will be joining us as well. She is a CAD Solutions Manager from PTC, and she'll be sharing a testimonial with us on one of her customers uh, that got a lot of value out of Creo Simulation Live. Uh, everyone gets a recording of the session pending any technical difficulties. Uh, there will be a short survey that appears once the webinar is over. So hang tight once we're done and drop your questions in the queue along the way so we can answer them after the presentation. So first I'll start off and tell you a little bit about who we are. At EAC, our mission is to transform the way companies design, manufacture, connect to, and service their products. Uh, we are more than just a value-added reseller for PTC. We've been partnered with them for over 20 years with experts in 22 areas of product development. We're located all over the U.S. with our headquarters in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, we offer our customers everything they need for product development. Uh, from CAD and simulation software for the full product design process, software for managing service documentation, and software for managing product data. We assist with design and engineering projects and offer webinars and PTC certified training courses uh, for continuous learning. We also implement the industrial internet of things and augmented reality into uh, business strategies to basically jumpstart initiatives around your uh, digital transformation uh, and then connecting all things in your company. We also offer our customers Formlabs desktop SLA printers, um, including the Form 3 for engineering parts and prototypes, the Form 3B for biocompatible dental materials, and then the Form 3L for larger SLA prints. Um, we try to make sure you remember that EAC is the company you need to partner with to get all of the technology you need at the forefront to make your team successful. Uh, I'll go ahead and hand things over to Todd, and he will get us started. All right, so quick uh, audio check. Uh, have you got me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, good. All right, so... Um, Good afternoon, everybody. So we're convened today to talk a little bit about uh, some simulation tools. Uh, but first, stop and think about what are we trying to achieve? Trying to, when we're doing our design and product development, we're, we're trying, to, in some cases, a lot of cases, to understand you know, how does our product actually perform? Um, and, and, and what can we do to shorten the development cycles and, and get to our products to market quicker? Um, and, or maybe our initiatives are to you know, develop fewer prototypes. We wanna do more digital prototypes instead of actually building stuff, building uh, uh, parts and assemblies and then taking them out to a lab or putting them in the field and testing them out. Uh, maybe your initiatives are uh, looking to reduce warranty or liability and other, other types of exposures. So, um, these are the t types of things we typically see when we're talking to our, our, our customers in different companies. These are typical things that we hear them saying, these are what they're trying to, to achieve as part of their business initiatives. So here's a typical development process, right? So there's nothing really new here, right? We've got uh, initial concepts that start off and then we go through the design phase. And then at some point we, we might uh, send that to a simulation group or, or a, a, an analyst to perform some, some different types of simulation. At some point, we'll probably build a prototype, and then uh, we'll go ahead and we'll manufacture that after we've gone through that process, and we think we've we've got uh, you know what we want as far as a good design. A lot of times, though, it's a very linear sort of process, or you know, it's it's sequential in that we'll do the design, and then we'll send it to simulation, and then we'll prototype, and then you know maybe we'll have to loop back to maybe some design changes and things like that, and then run through that process again for uh, you know some simulation and and, and kind of keep looping through that process. What happens, well, you know, what are some of the reasons why that's the case? Well, maybe we need to have some sort of a specialized group or individual that does the simulation. These are some of the bottlenecks as to why why people don't necessarily do more simulation uh, up front. 
uh, a lot of times you can't even use the actual design model. It might be a, might be overly complicated, or you might need to to spend a bunch of time simplifying or you know peeling out the information that's uh, sort of redundant to the simulation that you're trying to do. And that that takes time, right? It adds time into the process, and a lot of times it's just not available. It's just too much effort to do that. Plus, like I said before, this is an iterative sort of process, right? So you got to loop through this, and, and that's just extra steps along the way that you've got to go through design and simulation, design simulation, maybe build a prototype, and then go back and, and start something again or design change, right? So it's it's a, a bit of a challenge. Um, so what's actually happened here is that PTC's established a, a nice relationship with ANSYS um, to sort of revolutionize uh, product uh, design process by taking out these barriers between the CAD design and the computer-aided analysis. So really what we're talking about is the integration of the best in breed for both uh, you know, design and simulation and bringing that uh, to an easier to use um, set of functionality for the designers uh, early on in the process. So what we're doing is trying to bring this to your fingertips and we'll show you kind of now what this looks like here. So we're really including or integrating that simulation functionality right along the way with the concepting and design. Uh, and we're making it easy to do and it's it's fast, right? So it's it's not something that you have to, uh, you know, spend a lot of time uh, meshing and doing those types of things. It's kind of done for you uh, automatically and you'll see that it's virtually instantaneous type of results that you'll get. And so uh, this tool is actually uh, what's called Simulation Live. So we're actually looking at uh, uh, essentially real-time simulation um, as part of the design and development process. Uh, and, and you can certainly go a little bit farther than that if you want. If you want to look at more uh, uh, functionality as far as uh, deeper dives into the simulation and whatnot, you still can. But the Simulation Live tool is intended to be used earlier on in the design process uh, and is sort of an augmentation to uh, the uh, Creo Simulate uh, or you know a more more fully featured um, uh, ANSYS type solution if you need to go there, but the idea here is to give you this earlier insight into the design um, performance um, without necessarily having to go through that more complicated or involved um, simulation type process. All right, so with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Brittany. Great, thanks, Todd. You can hear me. Yep, gotcha. Great. Okay, so. Steelcase, uh, one of our customers who recently purchased Creo Simulate Live, they were founded in 1912 as a metal office furniture company, and their first patent was for a metal wastebasket. So they wanted to make the workplace a safer environment by replacing the wicker waste, waste baskets with metal waste baskets to help reduce fires. Now, they are the world's leading manufacturer of furniture, architect, and technology for products in the workplace. Their headquarters is out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they have over 13 manufacturing locations worldwide. So Todd, you can go into the next slide. So there are three main benefits that Steelcase receives while using Creo Simulate Live. Their first one is their reduced time to market. So they're able to get products out to market quicker than their competitors, which is a huge advantage. And by using CSL, the engineers are able to do a quick validation. They're able to look at different options early on in the product development process. The tool also reduces iterations between the product engineer and the analysis team, which overall leads to a reduction in time. Sometimes they could take two weeks. It could take two weeks to get an analysis back from their analysis team. And if there were three to four analysis needed, it could take up to a month to get the design back. So these three benefits of Creo Simulate Live um, help Steelcase save time, save money, and then help them design, um, help their design engineers uh, create better products on their own terms. So Todd, this is just one of many uh, really great customer references we have of Creo Simulate Live. Yeah, it's good stuff. Like it. Todd, I think we lost your audio. 
let's try that again. Uh, apologize for that. I muted out. So you have me now? I've got you now. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so what I wanted to do is to give some context as to uh, what we're going to look at here today. So um, I, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to take the role as a designer for uh, some snowmobile um, uh, uh, parts and assemblies, and I want to do some structural simulation on this model. So what we're going to do is take a look first at this chassis assembly, and I've got this sort of broken down. We'll jump into the chassis, and we're going to kind of take a look at uh, this subassembly here. And just to kind of give some scope that we're going to look at just this front portion of this and we'll go ahead and sort of just keep drilling down here here's this assembly and so um, I'm not really leaving I haven't done anything other than just sort of drill down into the subassembly here and for example let's just take a look at uh, this first part and if I want to take a look at some structural uh, simulation on that let's do that I'm gonna take a look here so uh, we're looking today at Creo 6 and uh, just looking at my model tree, I've got the materials already specified for this. You'll note that there's a new tab up here in the ribbon, the live simulation. And so uh, I've already got my material properties assigned to this. So it's gonna be the same type workflow that I would use uh, if I was using Creo Simulate, Creo Simulate Live. Uh, so much so in fact that the, the boundary conditions that I apply here in the, the model for Creo Simulate Live will work back and forth between Creo Simulate. So any, any uh, loads or constraints that I apply here will work uh, back and forth between those two different tools. So let's go ahead and do that. If I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, run a simulation on this, I'm going to go ahead and grab this uh, cylindrical surface where the shaft is going to go through, and we'll just fix that in place. The next thing I might do would be to apply a, a force. You can see I've got my loads up here. I can apply uh, force type loads. And I'll just pick that cylindrical surface and I'm just gonna make note of my orientation here and apply the load. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna make sure that I'm using uh, Newtons, right? And we'll go back here and apply uh, this load, let's say negative 1200 Newtons in the Y direction. And we'll also apply load in the Z direction. Okay, we'll get that applied. And then we're gonna do the same kind of thing here. We'll apply another load but I'm gonna grab these uh, cylindrical surfaces here and we'll grab this guy right here. And same thing, make sure them consistent with my units and we'll apply another load here in the Y direction and we'll go ahead and do that in the Z direction, All right? Okay, and so then uh, from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and kick off the simulation. So uh, from here, uh, what's gonna happen is, is the simulate live tool is gonna go ahead and start to analyze the model based on the geometry and the boundary conditions that I've applied. And I get pretty much instantaneous results back from that, right? So um, if I was gonna run this model in Creo Simulate, uh, which I've done, it's about a four minute process to get that uh, uh, solution all run. And you can see here, just within a matter of seconds, I'm starting to get some real time feedback about what's actually happening in the model. So you might be asking, well, what kind of results can I get, right? So if I go ahead and take a look at the deformation, I can get a nice animation about how that model is gonna perform. Um, there's different options that I can specify there. When I'm looking at that, I can specify how much deformation, uh, that type of thing. Um, the different results that I can look at, typical things you're gonna see in a, in a simulation run. So I can get all kinds of different uh, stress results. Um, uh, again, we're looking at uh, von Mises here in this case, but um, I can uh, take a look at this as a surface model, or I can look at different ISO surfaces and uh, different results that I can go ahead. Let's also show here the maximum and minimum values, uh, and I'll highlight there in little, little circles as far as where the maximum and minimum values are. Let's go back here and just uh, put that back on the surface. And if we uh, show the max and min, here's the, the minimum stress, here's the maximum stress at that location. So I get some nice feedback about what's actually happening in the model. If I want to take it and put a, a probe at some certain location, I can go ahead and do that. I'll just touch off on some little location there and I'm going to get the nice results. And I can save that if I choose. And that'll be, um, if you're familiar with the saved analysis uh, from any sort of measurement, uh, it's the same kind of thing. We're just kind of keeping track of that measurement that I can you know, sort of evaluate that based on the different options. Um, the other thing I didn't mention was the different types of analyses that I can do, right? So here we can do uh, linear static analyses. I can do uh, thermal analyses. We'll take a look at one of those here in a couple of minutes. And we can also do modal analyses, right? So, but the thing to keep in mind here is that um, I don't necessarily have to worry about creating a mesh or any of those types of things. The, the software is going to take care of that for me as I go through and uh, make design changes. And so you might be thinking, well, this is great, but really what's the difference between this and Creo Simulate? Well, the difference comes into play here. If I go back and say, you know what, I'd really like to look at some different design options. Maybe I wanna look at adding a rib or something like that here in the model and uh, what happens then, right? So if I do this using the standard Creo Simulate tool, I've gotta go back and rerun my analysis. 
But here's the difference between Creo Simulate Live. If I go ahead and pick on that, and let's go ahead and say we want to add a trajectory rib to that feature, the simulation pauses temporarily while I'm building this new feature, and I'm just going to go ahead and specify width for that trajectory rib, and then I'll go ahead and add some draft and the ribs or the rounds at the top and the bottom of that. And I'm just going to take the default values for that based on the geometry. So then I've added in uh, a couple of trajectory ribs based on uh, a sketch that I might be considering those locations for. And I'll go ahead and finish that feature and just that quick, right? So the simulate live tool is gonna go back and start to rerun that simulation. And now I've got some, again, almost instantaneous feedback as far as the performance of the model and what I can expect to see if I uh, load up that part in that fashion uh, out on uh, the, the real live assembly. So that's the difference, right? It's it's quick, it's easy. I don't have to uh, send it over to Creo Simulate. If I want to, I can. If I want to do something more involved, like a, a sensitivity study or some other sort of design study or optimization, I can still do that, right? But the idea here is that I want to get quick feedback so I can turn around different design options and figure out which is the right one, which way should I go. So the analogy I'll use in this case is is that of a compass as opposed to a GPS, right? So the Creo Simulate Live tool is kind of like a compass that tells me, hey, I'm going in the right direction or I'm not going in the right direction, whereas a GPS can give me more precise um, information about my exact location based on the current geometry that I have in the model. So hopefully that analogy sort of makes sense as far as how I would use the tool uh, and where I would use that tool in the overall design process. Questions? I'll pause at this point and see, Cassie, if there's any questions from the field. I'm not seeing any so far, but we can come back in a little bit and see if there's any more. But yeah, for those of you that are listening, please send in your questions if you have any. All right, hearing none, we'll uh, take a step back. I'll go ahead and close this and say, well, uh, I'll close this a couple of other windows here because I just kind of want to focus on the one that we want to look at here, which is that frame assembly. Because you might be asking, well, that's really great for parts, but what about the scenario where I have an assembly? So in this case, we're just looking at a subset of that chassis. Here's the part that we were just looking at. And I could do a, a, a simulation live on this too, right? So again, we'll jump into our simulate live tool. And I've already gotten a lot of that uh, boundary conditions information set up. So here, if we take a look at our test results, and, and the, that's the name of the analysis, I've got a, a fixed load here that's applied. And I've got a, a sorry, that's my constraints. I've got a couple of different loads here already set up in the model. So again, if I go ahead and run the, the simulation on this, uh, we're going to take just a, a little bit longer here because we have a little bit more geometry to look at, but we're going to get some pretty quick results back from the simulate live tool uh, to kind of show us what we can expect from that overall assembly. A little bit different loading scenario because we have more geometry here that we're applying the loads uh, to, but we can see that, you know, again, we're getting really good information back in, in a really quick uh, uh, short period of time uh, that gives me some good information about how my model is going to perform and behave based on on the uh, load case and the geometry that I've built so far. So that's a little bit, uh, so again, the, the idea here is that we're looking at uh, a pretty complex assembly and getting uh, you know, pretty decent results back from this in, in a very short order uh, that uh, helps me as a designer determine, hey, am I going in the right direction with this geometry or do I need to add some additional geometry? Do I need to add another rib, add another part? Those types of things for my design. There's no no questions on that. I'll go ahead and pause this analysis and uh, we'll shift gears and, and look at a little bit of a thermal analysis. Just a different type of study, right? So again, what I've got here is a nice little circuit board. And again, this is an assembly. We've got several different components here. Uh, we'll go into our live simulation. I'll just review some of the information that's already set up, right? So in this case, we've got our uh, constraints. We've got a boundary condition over this portion of the part where we've got, uh, if we can take a look at this, we've got uh, a convection coefficient over that portion of the model, and we've got a bulk temperature that we're looking at, uh, the environment that that model is in. And then our boundary conditions here, we've actually uh, got a constant temperature load on the inside surface of this uh, uh, cylindrical hole over here. And then we've got several different heat loads in the model. So we've got a heat load from that for these different chips. And if we take a look at that, in this case, we've got, um, uh, we've got those different surfaces, and we've got uh, 500 milliwatts that are going through each of those different surfaces that we've got highlighted. To create a, a heat flow or a heat uh, type of uh, load on that, we can certainly do that. We'll create a heat flow. Again, just touch off on the top surface and say that we wanted to add an additional 500 milliwatts coming out the top surface of that little IC. We can do that. I know we've got that added. So again, all of our parts have material properties assigned to them. 
uh, and we've got a simulation specified, we can go ahead and start that simulation. And we start to get some good feedback about how our model is gonna behave and perform based on uh, the, the uh, loading case that we have so far. Now, one thing that I haven't done is necessarily put in any sort of boundary conditions um, or my um, convection condition on the fins. So they're really not doing anything at this point because I haven't told uh, uh, Simulation Live anything about the conditions of that. So let's go ahead and set that up. So I want to add some convection. In this case, I'm just going to put a little fence around. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. So I want to grab all of those fins. So I'll just do something like this. I'm going to grab those surfaces there and make sure that I pick this one here. And we're going to give it a con uh, convection coefficient there. And we'll add a bulk temperature of uh, 20 degrees on that. And so now you can see that by adding that just that quick, I can see the effect of those uh, cooling fins on that, uh, that uh, circuit board assembly. And then you might say, well, what, what if I wanted to change the shape of that? What if I wanted to have a different design set for those fins? Well, I could do that, right? So back here, we can look at our, um, our uh, different uh, geometry here. Here's our main heat sink. We've got a set of fins here. If I go back and edit the definition of this, maybe I've got a different sketch. So what I'll do here is use a different scenario for that. Straight fins instead of the curved fins. We'll do something like that. And it, what happens again is it pauses out that simulation while I do my design change. We'll finish that design change. And as soon as that's done, Creo Simulate Live jumps back into action and it, it uh, you know, performs that uh, thermal analysis for me as soon as I complete that design change in the model. So again, it gives me virtually real-time feedback about how my design is gonna you know, perform based on the changes that I've made in my model. Great, Ted, we do have one question, actually a few that came in, but this first one um, is can you load a pressure field from a flow simulation in Creo Simulation Live? Uh, so that would be on the structure side of things, right? So if I understand the question correctly, let me go back here and looking at this. So these are the different types of loads, right? So we have a pressure load. Um, and so if you're asking about bringing in uh, from like a Creo flow analysis type result and then bringing that in here, is a, I think that's the question. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, initially that could be passed back and forth between the different tools, right? So uh, if you have, um, uh, you know, results from like a, a Creo CFD type uh, simulation, those results can be brought in here. I don't have that set up ready to show you today, but that can certainly be done. So these tools all work together. So you can um, take that uh, result from another tool and bring that into uh, Simulate Live. Great. Um, that second question that came in, um, with larger assemblies, is there a way to control element size if the simulations get too heavy? Um, is this totally controlled by the software or can the designer dictate it? There's some flexibility relative to that, but it's not so much um, in terms of what you're traditionally thinking about relative to elements, right? So what we have here is, uh, and I didn't show this before, but it's a great question, uh, allows me to come back and talk about this. We have this option here under the setup for performance options. And what you have is this slider here where you're basically trading off the speed of the simulation versus the accuracy of the simulation. And so uh, what we're really doing here is saying, hey, give me, a, give me quick results as opposed to more accurate results, obviously based on the slider. But what you're doing is, is you're basically telling the solver that you're looking more generally for trends. Let me go ahead and, and just run the simulation here. We'll take a look at what's actually happening with the geometry. So if I zoom in on this, you can see that this fastener here uh, is basically sort of um, um, integrated or melded or merged with that that component that's behind there so there really isn't a traditional p element or h element type mesh that's created here so there's this uh, i guess the technical term might be voxel so it's a volume element that we basically are, are filling in the part uh or filling in all of the parts with these voxels and then we're um using that to help uh basically uh, perform the simulation we're calculating what's happening in that particular volume region of the part and so that's a, another important point to note here is that um, the Creo Simulate Live tool does have some hardware requirements for it. Specifically, it's got to use, you have to have an NVIDIA uh, graphics card that supports the CUDA engine. 
and uh, memory uh, on that video card is going to be an important factor for that. Um, so more memory on that video card is going to be better. But PTC has a couple of different things. They have a reference uh, for sort of defining which cards are supported and are going to be, uh, you know, the ones you're going to want to choose from. And they've also got a, a little application that, allow, that you can download and run that and tell you whether the video board that you have is, is going to be supported and it's going to work with Creo Simulate Live. So it's, it's really a function of... Um, the graphics card so let me back up and explain something else too right so your traditional solvers are going to use uh you know the uh the cpu of the computer uh in in this case Creo simulate live is using a little bit different approach in technology in that it's using the uh, graphics cards to do all the the solving uh for the the simulations whether it's you know structural or thermal or, or modal type or vibrational type analyses. So it's it's using the massively parallel processing capability of a video card uh, instead of the more um, you know traditional uh, approach using the, the CPU. So that's why we've got a certain set of requirements for hardware, both in memory and the the type and capability of the, the graphics board um, that's going to be required to uh, to utilize the, the the software. So long-winded answer, but um, I'm I'm hopeful that that um, addressed the question. If if I went back here and, and changed the the uh, performance options here and changed this back to speed and accuracy, what you're going to see is you're getting sort of a um, uh, this is a grossly exaggerated scenario, but you're getting um, sort of this um, gaps in the model because it's saying, hey, you know what, I I really don't care about that volume region of the part so much. I really want to see more what's happening through the overall scope of the assembly, and so that's sort of the difference between the speed and accuracy uh, results that you get. Thinking in terms of where this tool is used, right? So as the as the designer early on in the process, you're um, probably more interested in general trends about what's happening with your model, and this is a great tool for that. You're going to still get accurate results. So if I went in and measured the results that I'm getting in this region of the model with Creo Simulate Live as compared to Creo Simulate, I'm still going to get very very comparable results as far as the numerical values. But you know, in some cases, I might get a little bit of banding or, or you know, less geometry here. In this case, the video card, um, I might not have quite enough memory to look at this assembly. But um, uh, as far as the general trends and what's actually happening here, the accuracy of the results is going to be very comparable to what you're going to see in, in uh, Creo Simulate or the ANSA solution. There is uh, another question that came through as well. Um, can thermal solve for a natural convection problem? Um, can you have a fluid mesh? Um, I'm not sure I understood the second half of that question. Can I have a fluid? I'm going to look in the polls here to see. Did that question actually show up in the, in the thing so I can read it? Or Yeah, it, Thomas sent it in. Oh gosh, that window is all teeny tiny. I can't squish it. I can't stretch it. <laughs> yeah, he's. I think can he's you read it again? I'm sorry. Can thermal solve for a natural convection problem? Yeah. So, um, in the case of this other model that we were looking at, um, I think that was just a free convection that I had here. Um, if I look at my simulation here, so my convection conditions, uh, I've got the, in this case, the convection coefficient that I can uh, calculate or, or determine and then plug in my bulk temperature. Um, I, I um, look in here, that's the co only convection condition I have. Um, and I, I could also have, um, I could also in my um, uh, structural simulation include a gravity load, I believe, right? So that would be, um, uh, another thing I could add to, to help with a natural convection, because I think you have to have that for natural convection. Great. I hope that answers the question. If not, Thomas, you can always write in again. Um, another one that came through is, um, can you get contact pressure as a resultant? Um, so contact is going to be between the different components um so in this case i'm bouncing back and forth between my structural uh and my thermal simulation if we go back here to this guy um so i could create a, a, an analysis here but as in creo simulate i can create a contact between different components and then as a result of that i can get uh that contact uh area and contact pressure as a measurement don't necessarily have that same type of option here for creating that measurement 
um, I can put a probe at a different location and measure results at some particular area, uh, but I don't think I necessarily have contact area um, or contact pressure uh, that I can look at a, at a specific component. If I was gonna, if I needed to have those types of things, I would uh, definitely look to transition into Creo Simulate uh, instead of the Creo Simulate Live tool set. Great, we've got another question here. Is it possible to evaluate the bolt tension and sealing pressure on the contact surfaces of two parts bolted together? I think that's going to be a very similar answer to what I just described. If you need that type of uh, resultant from your analysis, that is going to be a Creo Simulate function uh, instead of a Creo Simulate Live function. Awesome. I do have one more too. Thank you. Sure, it's all good. Any questions in? Um, so, is there an easy way to share these results to managers or teammates or other engineers? Somebody is my perfect straight man. So up here in the simulation report, yes, I can generate this type of report information uh, and, and kick that out as an HTML type page, right? So um, here's uh, just the standard default configuration for that report. Um, so this uh, certainly can be uh, dumped out um, as a, in this case, it's a web page. You can just simply save that off or, or you could uh, you know print that off as a PDF too. Along with that, you could certainly create, uh, you know, saved analyses. So if I went in and created a simulation probe, and if I went back in and picked the details on this, picked some particular location, wherever I wanted to measure that at that location, and then when I say uh, I can save that, and that becomes a saved analysis that I can, uh, you know, leave on and have that as a flag. And uh, as I mentioned before, in the analysis tab in the ribbon, you'll have that as a saved analysis that you can turn on or turn off. So if you wanted to turn that on while you do your simulation, uh, make some design changes, you may want to turn this off because it, while it's nice, it kind of gets in the way from doing modeling and that kind of stuff. You simply control the visibility of that, turn that off, do your design changes, then come back and turn it on when you do your simulation again. Okay, one more. Is the thermal solver um, the same thing as a CFD solver? Does it solve CFD? Nope, it is not, right? So it's uh, it's different functionality. So this is uh, basically the, if you want to think about it this way, it's it's a uh, uh, ANSYS tool set. It's the Discovery Live tool set that's been integrated inside of the Creo uh, parametric environment. And so really, again, back to different types of analyses we can do are going to be these, right? So it's going to be a, a structural type analysis. It's going to be a modal or a thermal type analysis. The CFD uh, type analysis is separate functionality. So if I wanted to look at something like that, let me go back and turn off the analysis. We'll go back here. That type of functionality is going to be available for you in applications, and you could do a flow analysis here. But that's a separate functionality, separate tool set from the uh, Creo Simulate Live. I believe that PTC does have some plans to integrate some CFD functionality from ANSYS into uh, the Simulation Live toolset. And I don't know if Brittany can speak to timeline on that, but I want to say that's in the Creo 7 or probably Creo 8 timeline, but uh, I don't have those exact details. Yeah, I think you're spot on, Todd, with around the Creo 7 timeframe. I think they're targeting within six months or so. But to, to uh, fully answer that question, um, no, not not yet, right? So that's uh, Creo Simulate Live is at this point those three types of analyses, structure, modal, and thermal. Right, I think that answers all the questions in the queue for now. Um, and you can continue to send them in and we will answer more um, near the end. Okay, so hang with me a second here. I'm not a PowerPoint guy, so let me do the this. Oh, sorry, I got to flip the, the screen on that. So that was the demo. Then the next thing, just sort of summary slide, right? Um, what do we look at? We looked at getting real-time feedback on helping you make your design decisions. Um, the things that we looked at Creo Simulation Live giving us are listed there in bold, right? Speed, super fast results, easy to use, right? You get your first simulation back in minutes, if not seconds. Um, easy to edit those features. Basically, you're working, you're, you're just adding in this uh, capability in your normal workflow, 
right? So um, you just uh, go ahead and create what you need to, and the simulation is going to pause. It'll stay out of your way while you're creating the feature, and then uh, come back and give you results when you're done. Interactive, right? So it helps you make those design decisions because you're getting that real-time feedback and seeing what that uh, new feature design change brings to your model. And at the bottom of the page, we talked about that, the different types of analyses that are powered by the ANSYS technology being integrated directly inside of your Creo environment. So again, why Creo Simulation Live? Not, not gonna read you the bullet points, but really it's there it's to help you understand your model, understand your design's performance, um, shorten the design process, help you get to market quicker, maybe cut down the number of prototypes that you need to make because you're doing this all digitally because you can do it so quickly, and a deeper integration of the simulation throughout the development process. So again, not intended to replace Creo Simulate, but to work early on in the design process. And when you need to get those more involved answers, contact pressures, uh, sensitivity studies, you know, other nonlinear type analyses, step up to the Creo Simulation tool uh, to help you get those answers. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll uh, just throw this up on the screen. Uh, we'll take a look at this limited time offer. Yeah, so I'm not seeing any more questions that come in, but you guys can certainly still send them. Um, we'll answer them after the presentation or after the webinar is over. Um, so thank you so much, Todd and Brittany, for the, the presentation. I want everyone to know that there is a, a limited time offer um, available to EAC um, customers only. We are offering 20% off CSL licenses if you purchase in the month of February, and then 10% off if you purchase in the month of March. Um, these discounts apply for the first year of your CSL subscription activation. Um, I know that people have asked this in the past, but Creo Simulation Live is available as a locked or floating license. Um, these are your CSL reps um, on the slide here. Uh, they will be taking any and all calls regarding the promotion or any questions about CSL in general. Um, so reach out if you're interested. Um, just a quick reminder too that that survey will appear once we shut down the webinar. So thanks again everyone and have a great rest of your day.